The third point we have to analyze is the fact that it is a normally owned device, and this is undesirable, as we, uh, as we mentioned. Uh, luckily, there are solutions. Now, normally owned devices are not considered anymore because it's, uh, it's really uh, no one wants to, wants to buy them, and <laughs> you can do as much research as you want on them, but no one will take it in consideration. So, uh, we dropped that. This is how we started in uh, our group. This was the very beginning of my research. Now we are looking into normally owned structures. And uh, luckily, uh, there are, um, okay, first of all, uh, normally off is also said, uh, it's also called announcement modes device, and it means that at zero best condition, the device is not state. So the two deck is depleted under the gate, and you need to apply a positive gate bias for the electron, exactly as in a um, n type silicon MOSFET, n channel silicon MOSFET. Normally off operation of the of the power switch allows for a, a simple and a, a more efficient design of the of the driving and control circuits. We, uh, that is something we want. There are uh, five common solutions for off, uh, normally off uh, transistors. For each of them, I'll give you the pros and cons, um, and I'll also show that there is still um, lots of research that can be done to improve these structures. The first one is the recessed Schottky gate. So starting from a normally on device, as we, the one we have seen before, this is exactly the same cross-section. It's just that in this case, for simplicity, I didn't include the, the, the Ganka player in, also in the, in, the next, in the next slides. In particular, in this one, the Ganka player is not included because we want um, to have uh, the two deck depleted under the gate uh, thanks to the Schottky depletion. So we have a Schottky gate, which is uh, recessed, and uh, the distance between the Schottky gate and the two deck uh, here is called TRA. Um, and this distance will affect the threshold voltage of the device. So in other words, what you have is that the two deck is depleted because the Schottky depletion associated to the gate is actually depleting the region beneath it. And it has to be recessed because otherwise uh, the Schottky depletion does not reach the two deck and you have a normal structure, a normal own structure that is the one. It is very thin, however. It is very thin. You have here the uh, uh, thicknesses. It's 12 nanometers, 16 nanometers. You start having a positive threshold voltage, uh, you see, for uh, 5 nanometers. Oh, TRA. TRA, yes. So this goes negative, as you can see. These are the values you normally would have of 12 uh, actually even higher, 18 nanometers, so it goes negative, which is a normally on operation. If you decrease, the threshold voltage becomes positive. Uh, it was the very first attempt to have normally off structure, and uh, it's it very easy to manufacture, manufacture because you just need to have a shot gate, uh, which reaches um, a little bit uh, lower down. Uh, but it has a low positive threshold voltage. Ideally, we would like to have ideally higher than 2 volts. But it is not the case, it's around 0.8 and the high gate leakage current. So we mentioned before we were including the gun cap layer to avoid the leakage going through the gates in off state. And now we are not only removing the gun cap layer, but we are etching the algan. So the leakage current in off state from the drain to the gate will be even higher. So um, easy and intuitive, but not the best solution. Second solution is the PIGAN gates, the GIT. This is one of the most popular solutions. It's a Panasonic patent. Uh, they claim to have devices that work very well. I, did I measure that? I, I didn't measure myself. I measured something similar, uh, but apparently they work very well. And they have a PIGAN gate under the um, under anomic uh, gate, which is depleting the, the, the two deck. You see the band diagram over here. Hopefully it's big enough for you to see it. Uh, mm, you see that the Fermi level is quite away from the conduction band. So if you look at the band diagram, you would see that the two deck is not formed. And uh, you have depletion given the fact that you have anomic content on a P-type material. And uh, um, this on a, a narrow algal layer will uh, deplete the two deck underneath it. So there are two ways of looking at it. Either if you think in terms of depletion, the, P, the ohmic gate on the P gun will extend the depletion all the way to the two deck. Or if you are familiar with the band diagrams and you know that you have a very high channel concentration 
because the Fermi level lies above the two deck in a normal uh, uh, gun transistor, then if you shift all the bands up because you have a p-type material, you are leaving the Fermi level at zero bias there and the conduction under shift up so you can see that the two deck is not formed anymore. Uh, you have to be a little bit familiar with conduction bands though, to follow this uh, uh, way of thinking. It's um, another way to look at why the, 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 the two-dimensional electron gas is depleted. Which eventually it's not shot key contact. So the metal used and the uh, uh, process, the uh, process is not the one. Uh, yes, but you have a p-type though, and you have an electron channel. That is a barrier for electrons. You might have some kind of um, current from the gate to the substrate because you have p in off state. Uh, okay, you have p, you have the two deg, and then you have a p-type substrate. But in that case, it really depends on how you designed your buffer layer. So, but it's 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 it p, so it's a barrier for electrons. And the, the value of the doping is crucial, and the thickness of the gun as well is quite crucial. Um, uh, what you can have is what is shown here is for very high gate biases, uh, you can have injection of holes because it's a P uh, and a junction, and this could give us uh, could give you um, leakage current through the gate. In general, what you I measure this device is a little bit more complicated than this. What happens is that you have a gate leakage current, but for high gate bias, usually it's about seven volts. And you don't use that voltage uh, for a gate drive, usually you stay below that. So as long as you know that the uh, gate switches on for a voltage above a given value, then and it is constant, that value, then circuit people are happy in general. Uh, the third way is a fluoride-based plasma treatment. Uh, it's a um, very simple idea. So all you do is to inject, uh, to implant, not inject, to implant um, fluoride-based uh, ions, which are negatively uh, um, negative charges. And because you have a negative charge underneath the gates, you deplete the two deck, and uh, and then that's how you obtain the normally off structure. Uh, the problem is that you have a low leakage current, but the problem is that the positive threshold voltage again is quite low, is not higher than uh, you have it here. So this is a normally on uh, device. This is the normally off with this uh, technique. The higher the the highest they reach is 0.8 uh, volts, which is again not ideal. And um, instability of threshold voltage over time. So in this case, they mentioned they have 0.8. And then you apply any kind of stress, and it becomes 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and um, it's not very reliable. It's uh, not one of the most I used. That, that one is a doping. It's a doping. It, it is kind of doping. And it's very, very, thin, very thin, very few atoms there. Just it, few threads activating will change the. the exactly, level. exactly. So it's a way to say, okay, I have an idea, you can put some negatively uh, charged atoms, but yeah, it, it, it's not the best. That's why I was mentioning the GIT, the gate injection transistor, is the best so far. But there is an, uh, still another one, which is the uh, MISFET-like. This is also becoming popular uh, because the advantage of this structure, okay, first of all, you have the gate, which is trenched down. It doesn't really matter if it's a short key or ohmic, to be honest. I left a short key, but uh, I'm sure there are also ohmic contacts. Uh, it's etched down uh, through the algon, and you have a thin passivation layer. So if you look at it, this is like a MOSFET. So you need to have positive gate bias to form the inversion uh, layer under the gate, and this is how you switch it on. Because you have a silicon nitride position layer, you have a lower leakage current, which is typical of MOSFET-based devices. Uh, it's called MISFET because it's metal on insulator, it's not oxide as for the silicon, that's the main difference. And, uh, and the threshold voltage is quite high because you have a silicon nitride layer, an insulator layer uh, below it, so it's 2 volts. Uh, higher than 2 volts actually, and also very stable. The problem is uh, the difficulty in controlling the fixed charges at this interface. So we said we have charges between the passivation layer and the top layer. 
uh, charges, uh, by charges I mean untrapped, then you have the same here. There is no uh, reason. Not so the concept exists as a because you don't have the interface. You, you form it. I mean, you, you, you don't have the interface. Yeah. You don't have the interface, but this is usually quite narrow, so it, narrow. Uh, mm, it doesn't affect that too much. But uh, it could be the, the, main, uh, the main component of the resistance. It's actually, in these structures, the main component of the resistance is the one beneath the gate. So it's really crucial, the dimension and the doping, if you think about the GIT, it's really crucial as a design parameter. And you see the threshold voltage, this is higher, in this case it's even higher than 4 volts, so 5.2. Uh, the, the last one is cascode configuration. Um, this is something that companies, such as, for example, I have, uh, they use normally no, if you are familiar with a cascode configuration, no. Okay, just very briefly. You have a normally on device, so this is the gun device you have. It's a normally on, which means you have two deck there, a zero bias, and then you have a silicon a MOSFET. Uh, the switching on and off of this configuration depends on the silicon MOSFET, which has a positive threshold voltage. So if we start from a zero bias condition, zero bias condition, this is on, but this is off, so you don't have any current flowing in the pair uh, gun silicon, uh, so the device is off. As long uh, when you switch this on for the VGS higher than the threshold voltage of silicon uh, based uh, device, then you have current flowing. Uh, of course, if you apply a positive voltage on the drain, you have a current flowing because the, the gun device is on already. In off state, this is switched uh, off by applying a negative threshold, uh, a threshold voltage lower than the gate bias. And this is uh, switched off. And uh, you have that the voltage drop uh, uh, first drops in on, the, on, the, on the silicon until the voltage on the, on the source of the gate is such that you reach the uh, negative threshold voltage of the, of the, of the gun device. And then all the voltage drop will follow on the gun, um, which is the which is designed for high uh, uh, for um, high power application. Um, the the pros of this uh, of this structure is that it's very so something new for them is the symbol for the uh, hand, the symbol for the gun hand. They uh, yeah, it's a, okay. like a MOSFET, but you don't have the, the yes directly. yes exactly because you don't have the insulator. Yeah. Um, While well, this is indeed it's a, a silicon MOSFET because you have the classical symbol. Yes. Um, so it's very stable this device because the threshold water depends on the on the silicon MOSFET uh, and it's very reliable. But in this case, you are introducing a silicon MOSFET in the switching of the of the of the whole uh, configuration. Uh, so the silicon MOSFET will have some time associated to the turn on and turn off. So you lose the advantage of the fast switching associated to the gun. So it, it, it's not one of the best uh, solution. Um, not of the one of the favorites uh, at least. Um, the the other point is that you have the as I was mentioning uh, also in terms of switching, you have the resistance of the silicon MOSFET is affecting the overall resistance of the pair, and it has been measured if you look at how the percentage of the uh, of the RDS on depends on the on the voltage. You see that. Um, the, the influence of the MOSFET uh, becomes um, negligible if you go to voltages above 200 volts. So this uh, configuration is very good for uh, drain biases above 200 volts.